Welcome to Worship at Grace. Uh, let's see, Caitlin and Marco, we just had a party for them. Thank you, choir, for putting on such a great party. Uh, we can almost count you as three today in attendance. <laughs> so blessings on that boy or girl to come. Let's see, if, are there any uh, visitors? I don't think I see any visitors today. In terms of the announcements, um, we're going to continue wearing masks until we decide it's safe. Uh, not to do so. The worship's going to be at 10 for a while. Clara asked me, when, when will we go back to 11? And I said, uh, the last discussion I heard was that uh, we're, we're waiting to see what Sunday School's going to do about starting Sunday School back before we make the decision about the hour of worship. Um, are there any other announcements that we need to make? I just wanted to let everybody know As a principal of an elementary school, they keep having breakouts of COVID, and she has to do all the contact tracing. And being the efficient person she is, she tries to make personal phone calls about that. So the weekend, she's ending up having to do a lot of phone calls uh, for that contact tracing because they are having more breakouts. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate Lane, and I think Nancy's played a few times, and Emma will play to help Nicole out. So just remember to call in her school. That's, thank you so much for letting us know that. Any other announcements? Let's continue with our worship.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God keeps faith forever, executes justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, sets the prisoners free, opens the eyes of the blind, lifts up those who are bowed down. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let the people say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Be join me in prayer. Oh, Father, Mother, God, the God of tiny babies and of people with wrinkles, of little children, people with gray hair, and everything in between. We thank you for this time together, this day to be together. We remember those who cannot be here today, and we draw their spirits here. We ask that you extend your spirit to encircle them, to let them know that they are loved and part of this community. Particularly as we go through these times, our time together is precious. And we thank you for the ways that we can safely be together. We thank you for the miracle of science. We thank you for the miracle of vaccines and masks and other things that help to keep us safe. Thank you that you have created our minds so beautifully and that we are able to work with the travesties of the world. We do ask that you be here at this time with us to bring your spirit to bear upon ours, to be in our minds, to be in our hearts, to be in our souls as we spend this time together, and yes, as we go out into the week. May you fill our spirits, expand our minds, support our souls, and help us to be willing to reach out to those in need as we go. But for this time, for this next hour. Thank you for this time, this community, this family. Thank you for your presence. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we have a choral opening to do. <laughs> As we begin our prayers together, uh, let's celebrate first some birthdays. John Gerard Chestnut first. Did I pronounce his name right? Who is one year old tomorrow. And he made an appearance in the parking lot at the party. So this was, was this his first trip to church? Oh, there you are back there, Emma. Uh, so we celebrate John's birthday tomorrow. Jordan West Barker is on the 18th of September. Also, Kidney Koppelmeyer Steele is celebrating a birthday on the 18th. Uh, we have one anniversary uh, coming up, Forrest and Lane Adams. So congratulations to all these. Are there any other celebrations? Yes. Small, small private practice in Winston, and we also have a location in Clemens, so I'll be bouncing between those two places during the week. Wow. And I'll start there in the next two weeks. Awesome. Wow. 
Well, congratulations and blessings on this new opportunity for you. Any other celebrations? What about, uh, we now move into concerns. Uh, those whom we have been praying for are Dan Ero and his family and Billy Wilkes and her family and Chase um, Corsi and, uh, for his grandfather who has congestive heart failure in Thailand. Are there any others we would want to pray for today in addition to these? I added Mary Milstead onto that list. That is Zach's uh, grandmother. She passed away on Thursday oh. and her funeral was today. So just remember, remember his family, um, his dad was his dad's mom and they were very close and it's pretty hard on him. But she was 92 and in her kitchen, doing what she loved to do. Well, thank you. We will uh, we give thanks for her life and pray for the family. Any other concerns? Please continue to keep Peggy Wall in your prayers. Or her hysterectomy was Friday. Things went well. She will soon find out what further needed treatment she needs for her cancer. Thank you. <coughs> Any other concerns? Mom was saying about the principals, we're seeing in the school district that any time a decision is made, whether it's made by the board or by the governor, the principals are getting the heat. They have parents calling in with horrible messages, sending emails that you wouldn't send to your worst enemy. They're just really getting hit, and they take a lot of the brunt. So if you're looking for something to do to support your school system, do something nice for your closest principal Aww. because they are they just need some love. They're Aww. really taking a lot of heat right now. So just thank them for what they do and, and send something nice their way. <laughs> Kanky, what a beautiful thing to yeah. say and to ask us to do. Are there any other concerns? Well, we will pray for principals as part of our prayers today. Um, as we ponder the 20th anniversary of 7-11, excuse 7-11, 9-11, um, we remember the families and friends of the more than 3,000 who died that day. Um, for uh, the many first responders who are still suffering horrible kind of uh, physical conditions, health problems, because of their giving of themselves to, to, to uh, try to save other people. Uh, greater love hath no one, right? Um, and we, um, we remember um, the Muslim people in America who have, uh, who have uh, brought, who have been given great uh, anger and hatred upon people who have been hated and even more since 9-11. So I want to read a poem by a Muslim mystical poet. Uh, a thousand years ago, he wrote this. There was a time I would reject those who were not of my faith. But now my heart has grown capable of taking on all forms. It is a pasture for gazelles, an abbey for monks, a table for Torah, Kaaba. Kaaba is the most holy building where the pilgrims go uh, in the Islamic faith. A Kaaba for the pilgrims. My religion is love, which ever root love's caravan shall take, that shall be the path of my faith. So may we join that caravan. Let us pray. O oh God of every child of earth, we bring many names for you to you this day, but you are one. In the kingdom of God, we all are kin. We give you thanks for the mystery of love that is greater than the mystery of evil so we can sing words like though the wrong seems off so strong thou art the ruler yet. 
Help us this day to love every to uh, to love everyone who tempts us to return evil for evil, spite for spite, slight for slight. Save us from the temptation to get back and get even. Give us your love, O God, that overcomes all hate, and your light that overcomes all darkness. That we may not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In the name of Jesus, who taught us this way, and taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture uh, lessons today come from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 7, Acts 2, verse 17, Matthew 5, verse 17, and Matthew 15, verses 1 through 3. For I have handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? for they do not wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition?
Today we begin our celebration of grace at 50, or is it 51? The pandemic has messed with all our calendars. Over the next six months, we're going to be celebrating our church's birthday in different kinds of ways. Um, but today I want us to look, as we begin this series of celebrations, at two vital dimensions of the church our church and every church, traditioning and visioning. I like the verb form of tradition, traditioning, because tradition is a living thing. Paul uses the verb form of tradition in the text for today. I hand on to you what has been given to me. This is tradition. He's talking about the Easter tradition, but he could be talking about all the traditions of the church. Uh, tradition is a living thing because um, something's always being passed down. And something, as it's passed down, is being interpreted and made vital and adaptive to the mission and the needs of the church for today. Sometimes we get a disease called categorical sclerosis, the hardening of the categories. Jesus had, um, I might call it a, a lively relationship with tradition. He honored it and he criticized it. In his words before the Sermon on the Mount, he said of scripture and tradition, do not think I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Jesus was not a hater of tradition, but a reformer and renewer, a renewer of tradition. So a few verses down in the Sermon on the Mount, he six times said, You have heard it said of old, but now I say to you, he is traditioning, honoring the law and the prophets, and at the same time deepening them. The commandment against murder, for example, was deepened to be a commandment against anger in your hearts. And the commandment that said, love your enemy, but hate, I mean, love your neighbor, but hate your enemy, he said, love everybody, including your enemy. Later on in Matthew, Jesus takes on tradition and what it can do if wrongly used. The tradition keepers came to him and said, Why do your disciples not wash their hands before they eat? And Jesus volleyed back his own question. And why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of tradition? Mm, no gentle Jesus, meek and mild there. A living tradition has both words and music. Sometimes we lose the tune. The tune is love. Jesus was a great improviser of tradition. He knew when to stick to the words and when to deepen their meaning. And he always knew the tune. The Jewish people, when talking about their scripture, have two phrases, the written Torah and the oral Torah. The written Torah is the written words of Scripture. The oral Torah is the interpretation that goes on through the centuries. It keeps their Bible alive. So for us at Grace, there's a written tradition, which we recover from facts and documents and memories and there is the oral tradition where we have kept adapting it for today. In the next months, I hope that we take the opportunity to celebrate our tradition and traditions, to remember the moments that captured our hearts, the moments when it was not just us at work, but God at work too. Do you remember some of those? 
those early months of dreaming and planning, late 1970, our first worship service in the early days of 1971, the early years in our center block church, our first service in this building with the cross that Wayne Rogers made that we see every Sunday. Those Easter sunrise services with breakfast first here and then moved to 5th Street. 50 years of having communion together. I also hope that we will mark the ways we have altered our traditions through the years to better love God and neighbor and to be about our mission. Our very forming was an altering of tradition as we sought to be a different kind of Baptist church. Today, we're not just a different kind of Baptist church, we're a different kind of church with members from many denominations and faith expressions. On the top of my head, I can name seven. Methodist, Episcopal, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Catholic, Jewish, and Pentecostal. So call us Grace, Methodist, Episcopal, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Catholic, Jewish, Pentecostal, whosoever will, Baptist Church. Which, bring, which brings me to the other vital dimension of being the church, visioning. When the Holy Spirit was poured out on Pentecost, Peter said it was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. It will be in the last days, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall dream dreams, uh, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Girls and women, too. Remarkably so, here at Grace. Do you remember some of the original dreams and visions of our church? And what about those dreams and visions that have come since? In the 20th century, a new kind of theology arose called the theology of hope. And the theologians of hope said God is not just up there. God is not just in the depths. God is coming to us from the future. Coming with the new. This God comes with dreams and visions. So think with me for a moment. Who are members here today who would not have been members 50 years ago? Who is preaching from this pulpit some Sundays who would not have been preaching 50 years ago? What are ways we serve this community that have been expanded through the 50 years? There's a passage I love from Isaiah 43. The Hebrew people are languishing in Babylonian exile. They are worrying and despairing, and there's a little whining going on too. You acted for us in the past. Remember when you delivered us from Pharaoh? Why aren't you acting like that now? And God says, Remember not the things of old, nor consider the things of old. Uh, nor, uh, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I am doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? Remember not. There is a kind of remembering that is an act of faithfulness, and there's a kind of remembering that's an act of unfaithfulness. We can be gripped in nostalgia 
to go back to the church of former years, whatever church that was we may have grown up in. People all over our nation are nervous about the future of the church with some good reason. Some dream of going back to the 1950s or 60s or 70s, their golden age for the church. But those days are gone, never to return. God is doing a new thing. Let us be on the lookout for it. Nostalgia can be a deadly thing. It can cause us to despise or devalue who we are right now. It can close our eyes to the new. Peter Drucker, the Harvard business professor, said, sometimes to repeat the successes of the past is worse than a failure. We need Jesus in the Spirit to help us improvise on our tradition that we may more fully be who God wants us to be today. It will be a blending of the old and the new. One day Jesus was talking to his disciples about the kingdom of God and about how to be scribes for the kingdom of God. That is, wise teachers of the kingdom come near in Jesus. He said it's like this. It's like the head of a household who goes into the house treasury and brings out what is old and what is new. What is old and what is new. So this year, let's go to the church's cupboard and take out what is old and what is new. That we may give thanks for the old, love the old, and love and give thanks for the new. At the end of the celebration, may we say with Doug Hammarskjöld, that great Secretary General of the UN, for all that has been, thanks. For all that shall be, yes. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, the grace to risk something big for something good, the grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen.